Welcome to the Explore Composites Materials Library. This is Laminate Sample 42. This one is just two plies of 370 gram Boston Materials Super Comp, which is an interesting reinforcement that has Z-axis fiber stuck to one side of 200 gram carbon. And this is a look at it up close. It looks like fuzz. The fibers are very small and magnetically oriented in the direction pointing up uh, as you're looking at the ply. So when you put two plies of this together, as we're going to do here, the fibers kind of lock together and jam into the carbon and stick together and they create kind of a core. They add extra thickness and they spear themselves into the adjoining plies of fiber making for very tough and hard to damage laminate. So they make it less likely for the plies to be able to peel apart and in general increase the toughness or at least that's what the data sheet says. And this is a relatively new material. I got a sample of it and have tested it out. So here I am doing a vacuum infusion straightforward setup. It's just a coated peel ply, green mesh flow media, the vacuum bag, spiral wrap with peel ply on the inlet and the vacuum side. I'm going to pull it down here on a table that is probably about 25 or 30 C. Infuse it with ProSet infusion resin. The goal here really is to see how the material works. I've left one ply longer than the other so when I trim out the one square foot we'll be able to see a little bit of off cut that has just the z-axis fiber against the mold surface. So here goes the infusion. I pause this, in my experience I'll talk about in a minute, uh, with this on prior tests is that it does not permeate easily. You can see I paused it, let the air come out and then shot it through again. And this is a great technique for things that are hard to completely wet out or where you've got a lot of possibility for trapped air is you just turn off the resin as you're infusing for a minute or so and you'll see all the air pop up into the flow media and then you open it up again and all that air gets carried away with the flow of resin and you can see here how once it's into the fiber only off the flow media how it, it is slower flowing in the middle normally it would be faster in the middle because even with a woven like this it's still pretty permeable but the z-axis fiber in here really clogs it up and so the normal channels between the woven fibers where your resin would be able to flow pretty readily it aren't there they're all clogged up with z-axis fiber so it's a bit of a tricky thing to infuse and it took me a couple of tries so here it is all cured demolding it it's gonna pop off this Teflon very easily and it looks pretty nice. I made a lot of effort to shoot this infusion quite slow and to make sure I was given it plenty of chance to let any trapped air out. Everything's stuck together pretty good too. That coated peel ply makes for a good release but even so I'm going to show you it's uh, relatively hard to get off when it's got infusion media stuck to it. But the surface came out really good. You can see that dark area on the end where that's just the z-axis material against the tool surface. This is one of the failures. Here I did basically the same thing except I made a stack right at the, near the inlet side of probably six plies of material and I used a perforated release film because I figured that it's just a couple layers, what could go wrong, this normally works. Um, I also ran the flow media almost all the way to the end. You can see there's not much resin break, this has MTI hose as my effective resin break. It didn't work very well. They looked fine and it appeared to infuse okay, but once I demolded it there was a lot of porosity on the bottom surface 
I think a lot of air got trapped, and especially where there was that six-ply thick chunk. Uh, there's an awful lot of trapped air and ugliness. So here is the trimmed up panel. I marked on it which was the resin side from the, va the inlet and which was the vacuum side so that I'll be able to check thickness. But the overall weight was 136 grams for this, 4.75 ounces. And it was heavier than I predicted and quite a bit thicker. So here's an off cut. You can see that edge where the two plies stuck together and also where there's a single ply and it's interesting stuff to break it doesn't break the way you'd expect uh, the the interface where the z-axis fiber is stays stuck and it really kind of just tears the woven apart so you don't ever see a bond line failure really when in, in my couple of breaks it was always you just tearing the woven apart so definitely tougher than just two, say, 400 gram woven plies stuck together. There's a lot of potential for making tough, thin parts where this acts kind of like a core and that's one of their selling points, the, both the cost savings of using the short fiber to bulk the laminate and also that you're easier to manufacture, fewer plies, and of course this toughness. Feeling it, it feels quite stiff. It does not feel like two plies glued together. It really has sort of a, a high modulus ring, almost like something you get out of an autoclave. And checking the thickness, it is pretty much exactly the same thickness on the side where the resin went in as the vacuum side. And often you'll have a part where because of problems with the infusion it'll be thicker there'll be excess resin on the inlet side and it'll be resin starved on the vacuum side but here this worked out really nicely it's about ideal comparing it to this laminate number 27 which is just two 200 gram wovens open molded together no bag or anything uh, way thinner way lighter and way floppier so this the extra 170 grams of z-axis fiber while not pointing in um, a, a direction in plane definitely increases the thickness and the stiffness and it makes for a really interesting laminate with some neat possibilities thanks for checking it out have a look at explore composites for a lot more how-to composite stuff and I'll see you on the next one